As we continue on our journey towards Corpsewood, we begin to reflect on the tragic events that had unfolded there. We also begin to wonder what we may find during our investigation. And as fate would have it, tragedy strikes. With precious time ticking away, we experience a flat tire. We start to wonder if our journey may actually end before it begins. So we manage to locate the only tire in the whole state that will fit this particular vehicle. So with the tire changed, we continue on towards Corpsewood. The closer to Corpsewood that we got, the more you realize just how isolated that they were here. You also couldn't help but admire the type of freedom that they must have had up here, free from society and a lot of the distractions that come along with it. It almost gave you a sense of wonder as you started to approach where Corpsewood once stood. I thought I would show you guys some photographs of what this place looked like uh, back in the day before the, the fire. As you see by these uh, photographs here, we have uh, the old manor house <clears throat> back when they first built it. When we go down there, the only thing that's actually going to be freestanding will still be the gazebo area, which is this right here. The rest of the ruins look pretty much like this picture here in the ruins. But um, there's a two-story building, all brick. There was no plumbing, uh, no electricity. They lived totally off the grid. Uh, these folks here, Avery Brock and Tony West, are the, um, the killers that are still in, doing time in prison. This three-story structure right here is actually the chicken house that the pink room was reputedly to be in the top where they did different parties and whatnot. There was a major book written, of course, uh, Murder at Corpsewood, and um, this is what the, the cover of the book looks like here. It's hard to find book in this time period now. Uh, one of their mastiffs, they had two dogs, they, the dogs were killed as well. Here again is different shots of Corpsewood Manor from uh, the backside. We're going to be spending a lot of time in this area right here, on this back side here, which goes into that little kitchen area. And of course it doesn't look anything like this now. And there was, like I say, there were reports of them doing um, Satan worship. As a matter of fact, this mountain's been called Devil Worship Mountain as a result of that. And you can see here we have the upside pentagram with the goat here and as a um, you know, picture that they had in their windows, stained glass window. Then we have some other, uh, you know, satanic looking things here. <clears throat> we have some, um, this gothic looking uh, gargoyle that was here at one time. Now, Dr. Scudder did a self-portrait painting of himself. And this is the painting right here, a photograph of the, the, the painting. And it shows where he was bound, gagged, and shot in the head, very much like he died. So it's almost like a prophetic uh, self-portrait. And uh, this yeah. is a shot inside the, the living room, the kitchen area down below where they had this huge table here. It said that the last words um, from Dr. Scudder were, I asked for this. <clears throat> well, that's, I wonder uh, if that has any. Yeah, you got to wonder about those things. And again, this is the kitchen area where the stairs going up. And again, more, you know, possibly satanic type glass work here. And again, these photographs here are just kind of the way the ruins look today what we're going to see, although from when these pictures were made, the ruins are probably a little bit more in disrepair as we speak even now. So we'll go ahead and gather up our equipment and uh, see about going down and uh, see what we can make happen. We've got a little bit of daylight left here and we can get set up and uh, then we will uh, do our investigation. Okay, we've just left the vehicle. We're uh, going down the, the side of the hill here. We've left some uh, Silume light sticks up and down the trail here and all the way back to our vehicle. So when it gets dark, we can uh, find our way out of here. We're actually heading down right now. And there's actually the old ponds right down here. And we'll get down here, we'll take a look at that. But we're very close to the ruins now. So in a minute, we'll get to see them. We have the, uh, the pond here. Of course, at one time this was filled with water. Might have even had a little, um, you know, some fish in here and whatnot. The actual ruins are actually just up the hill here, just a little tad here. We're actually not far away. You can see through the uh, trees up there, we've got some you know, old English ivy. And that's actually the old gazebo. And we're going to walk up to that in a moment here. But before we do that, I'm going to pull my K2 meter out. Because a lot of times when you walk up to the site, 
uh, the K2 meter starts um, lighting up immediately. So uh, we're going to go ahead and be ready for that so we can't catch it on film as well. So let's go ahead and get on up here. K2 meter already is starting to uh, react here. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we get here as we come up closer. Oh, sticks here. I can't take the rabbit down. There it is. See it? Yeah. So already we're getting K2 hits as we get closer to the uh, the old ruins here. So we'll go ahead and come up a little closer here. I mean, it's like the minute you get up here, something gets excited that you're here. Someone's up here. Well, we just walked up to the ruins here, and it looks like we found the camera here that was actually uh, looks damaged, and uh, a Ouija board. <clears throat> and actually, the top of the box of the Ouija board has actually been here a while. So actually, this camera has been here a while. <clears throat> so it looks like somebody left this location in a hurry, and. Um, something scared them pretty badly where they left rather quickly. Now the K2 meter, um, as we were walking up to the ruins here, started flashing to the high range into the red zone there. And uh, which is very, very normal for when you come up here. Usually when you're walking up here with the K2 meter, it's almost like immediately something starts flashing and activating. So it looks like we're gonna have a very interesting um, investigation tonight. Okay, so what we have here is uh, what's left of Corpsewood Manor. This inside area right here is actually the, uh, the kitchen area right over here to the right. And there was like a little living room area right over here. This is the winding staircase that actually went upstairs. You can tell the, the structure originally wasn't so wide. It was a two-story building. And uh, this is just the remnants of it. Courtyard area here, and off to the right we have the little sheds that were in the back, little circle shed areas. And of course the driveway originally came from right back up here and came up to here. Now as we walk a little further, let's go this way right over here, JP. And uh, right over here is uh, where the outhouse was. So uh, it was built right here and you can see there's still water there and whatnot. So over here we have uh, what's left of the chicken house which was a three-story building and of course upstairs was the infamous poop room that a lot of people have talked about. So this is pretty much what we have. Um, you see it's not much left here now. It's all in ruins. As we were walking up we're getting quite a few K2 hits which has happened to me in the past as I've come up here in the past. This uh, K2 hits start happening really fast and then sort of die off for a while.